Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. I'm Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa out at the North Shore. And today we're going to go further north than Haleiwa. We're going to go way north because we've got a show on the joy of Canada. And to help me, I've got my guest and friend, Brian Richardson. Uh, welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> I think a good place to start, because, of course, uh, as you might guess, Brian is uh, born and raised in Canada, and uh, he came to us uh, from the far north, and he decided to stay. So I was going to ask you about that, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> what made you come here, and what made you decide to stay? Uh, well, so I came here I, uh, I, to do a PhD in political science, and uh, I really I wanted to sort of get away from Canada. I thought it would be good uh, to do a PhD somewhere else, uh, but I didn't necessarily want to go to the United States, and so Hawaii was a, an obvious compromise. And I had been here before as a tourist, as, you know, as a small kid, and also the, my supervisor at the University of Victoria. Uh, was very close friends with uh, who the guy who became my supervisor here in political science, and so it was really an academic uh, an academic connection. And I think you know, much like a lot of people who who come here, once you're here and and you have connections, it's just really hard to to leave. You know, I think I think I would go back to Victoria. I don't know if I would go you know back to some places in Canada because it's way colder. Um, so yeah, it's it, I mean it's a great place to live. Well, that's interesting. You know, I never knew that you uh, came here for a PhD in political science. Uh, that's interesting because I have a degree in political science too. Uh, but I instead of uh, pursuing it, I switched to psychology, which turned out to be a better fit for me. So we'll have well, to I went into that. library science. So you know, it's yeah. <laughs> well, I guess political science is a good place to exit from, especially with the politics nowadays. So. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy we did so. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the joy of Canada, uh, because every time I've been to Canada, I've been there a number of times. Uh, it's just been a joyous experience. And uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what inspires the joy uh, in you and that is connected with Canada? Well, I mean, Canada is a very big place. I mean, I can, yeah. I can really only talk about uh, Victoria, really. Uh, I mean, even, even Western Canada is is huge. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's there's so much complexity there. Uh, but you know, Victoria itself has a lot going for it. It's actually, I, th I think, very similar to to Honolulu in some ways. It's the it's the provincial capital, which means that it you know it has architecture and a lot of people working in government and so on. Uh, it also has great hikes. Um, I think we have a picture here of a coastal hike, uh, and um, there's also just a lot of local nature i mean you know so my mother for instance have has a hummingbird feeder uh, at the uh, you know that's connected to her uh, her lanai um door and you know much of her time well you know if she's not watching hockey or curling will be spent watching the hummingbirds fight over the hummingbird feeder so there's a lot of that also because of, in part because i think it's the provincial capital it has a lot of museums the royal uh, provincial museum is there uh, one of the local artists that I love um, is Emily Carr. And so there are various pictures uh, or museums that have her her work. And then there's also her childhood house and things like that. She was part of the the group of seven, which is a, a actually she was associated with the group of seven, uh, which is uh, you know quite a well-known uh, Canadian wide uh, art school um, movement, I guess. Around the, the like 1900 to 1940, something like that. Uh, there's also a really good local pub scene. I mean, it's one of the things when I came to Hawaii, you know, you have bars and you have restaurants, and in Canada, you have you have a lot of pubs. And so one of the things that you get then is you get like cider, uh, which is very hard to find here. Uh, at least good ciders find hard to find here. And then there's also just the the strange Canadian food that's made its way over to British Columbia. So one that people I think might have heard of is poutine which is a combination of gravy, fries, and cheese curds, which was first created in uh, in Quebec somewhere. I think it was the the guy in the restaurant more or less so just threw a bunch of stuff together in a bag and gave it to somebody. And <laughs> uh, that's, that's where it came from, which, you know, a lot of good food is like that. Um, and then the other is, uh, is ketchup. You know, so we have obviously a lot of ketchup, but we also have ketchup chips, um, which... Uh, 
so in this case, this is a picture from a, a local um, Scotch distillery in Victoria. And, you know, they sell Lay's ketchup chips. And apparently Canada eats more ketchup per capita than any other place in the world. Um, I don't know if we're proud about that, but it's certainly <laughs> it's a way of marking who we are. So, uh, and so yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in Victoria. I mean, it's a, it's an old city, well, old relative. It's from the 1860s, I think, initially, and it had, yeah, you know, it has a lot of great architecture. The Inner Harbor and so on uh, is just amazing, and a lot of 19th century large uh, brick buildings and so on. You know, that's that's one of the many times that I've come to Canada is uh, my passion is writing. And so I love to write. And uh, <clears throat> I came a number of times up to the uh, Canadian Writers' Work Retreat, uh, which was a week long and uh, just wonderful experience. I've been to a lot of writing retreats, and this was the best. I mean, I've even been to the Iowa School, which was wonderful. But uh, there was something special about the Canadian Writing Retreat. Uh, People just loved what they were doing uh, in the arts. Uh, and certainly in my experiences in the writing part of it, it was just uh, joyous. And unlike a lot of other writing retreats, we had open mic at the end of the day. We would do a lot of writing during the day. We'd have lectures. All sorts of things were happening uh, to stimulate us during the day. But at night, we could take our favorite writing and go up and be in sort of a pub atmosphere, like what you're talking about. We would be gathered around, and there would be an open mic there, and anybody who wanted could come up and read uh, what they had written. And uh, the audience was always very uh, pleasant and supportive and gave you a round of applause, whether you deserted it or not. And uh, that was one of the things that I, I really enjoyed about it. I forgot about the ketchup, though, but that was <laughs> thanks for reminding me about that. Well, and I, I get made fun of all the time here because, you know, when I go out for food here, I'll put way more ketchup on than pretty much the rest of the table combined. So, yeah, which is, you know, I'd have a hard time surviving in Chicago because apparently you're not supposed to put uh, ketchup on hot dogs in Chicago. Like it's it's a it's a sin of some kind. So, oh, that's yeah. interesting. I'm told. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's let's go to. Uh, some of the things, the other things, uh, we've already talked about culture, but there are other things that uh, Canada really shines in. And uh, Brian and I were talking about this earlier. And uh, one of the areas um, is healthcare. So uh, maybe we could talk about that in other areas that Canada really shines and uh, makes it pretty easy to live up there and makes people less anxious than, uh, than the world is making us now. Yeah, I mean, you know, healthcare, uh, you know, there's always a but here, you know, as uh, I, 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 as the, the sage Pee Wee Herman once said, you know, all of my friends have a big but. And and in this case, <laughs> it's, you know, that it, I think it, it's better, but it, it's not great. I mean, it's not perfect. And it's probably gotten worse. I think it, it certainly has gotten worse over the last 20 years or so. But I think there is this commitment more in Canada to to maintain a social network or a social support um, where, you know, you don't get a lot of people going bankrupt because of medical issues. I mean, there's all sorts of things that happen, but yeah, medical issues, you know, there's not that fear of, of losing medical insurance in Canada, which I think really decreases the anxiety that people have. I mean, they don't have to stay in a job to keep healthcare and things like that. Uh, I think that, you know, Canada generally is, is less unequal than, than the United States, uh, partly because of the taxation system, um, partly, I think, just the way that the economy works, uh, and because basic social support is is better or, or more more equal, whether it's better or not, it's another issue. Uh, and so I think, you know, things like, um, you know, you just, you don't have as many people in sort of economically desperate situations, which really contributes to the, just to the overall quality of, of life for everyone, right? And that's, that's part of it is, you know, you might have a lot of money, but if you're surrounded by desperate people, then you're not necessarily happier. Um, and part of that then is also, I think the, just the way that schools and the way that education is funded is very different. And that might connect, you know, why, why writing retreats in Canada might be more successful in a way as well, because, uh, you know, I mean, there's, again, still some inequality between schools, but there's so much more sort of broad support for education, going to the university 
is much cheaper than it is here, uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, there's that sort of social capital that seems to be more pervasive in Canada. Well, that's, you know, I think that that's one thing I've always admired about Canada. And, uh, you know, and it's something that hopefully we're going to be working more toward uh, in the future as far as uh, the United States go. And uh, because it is difficult. And, uh, and again, going back to the arts, it's, uh, it's tremendously supported. And here right now, we're seeing a lot of states, for instance, who are cutting back a lot of educational systems, cutting back on the funding and the classes in arts, uh, whether it's music or art or writing or whatever. And uh, I think that's a big mistake because that's that's incredibly important. I know that, you know, when we talk about Canada, I always think of the music of Canada and uh, so many of the singers that I love and so much of the music that I love comes from, from Canada. And some of our great actors and actresses come from Canada as well. So, um, it's really important, uh, and it just feels very comfortable uh, when I'm up in Canada to uh, to have that. And like you say, less anxious uh, about you know what's going to happen in the uh, in the future. It's more uh, low key, and and we'll get we'll get back more to that. Tell us a little bit about uh, community, and I because I think that's part of it too. When when things are more equal, like you're talking about, communities, it's easier for communities to come together. And uh, there's, you know, there's less uh, diversity as far as social economic class and uh, people feel comfortable with one another, certainly in my experiences in Canada. So if we could talk about that and maybe how it contributes to the resiliency of people up in Canada. I think I find the Canadian people much, very resilient, which I think is a wonderful mm -hmm. attribute. I mean, it helps that we don't have that many hurricanes or earthquakes, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think part of it is that there there seems to be more of a social system. Uh, there are more open spaces. Uh, I think, I mean, I, I can't compare it to a lot of the places in the U.S. because I just haven't experienced them that well. But uh, but things like public transportation is so much more powerful. There's so much more useful in Canada. Um, I mean, the rail could use work, but yeah, I mean, the the transportation, there's hiking, biking. There's a lot of social spaces. And I think that's one of the things that hasn't happened in Canada and hopefully won't is is really the extreme privatization of social spaces, uh, and that you know the more people are able to to join together, you know the better things are in general. I mean, I remember seeing this picture of Paul McCartney on on a train in Britain, you know, and how you know some people were just like, "Wow, he's taking the train in Britain," but yeah, you know, others were saying, "Yeah, that's not a big deal. That's what people do in a in a social country, right?" Or a, yeah, and so yeah, I think the public. The public resources are are more pervasive in Canada, um, and I think you know you and I have talked about this. I think that the you know the weather probably has something to do with it. I mean, you know, just in Victoria, it's like part of it is how much it rains in Victoria. I think we have a picture of downtown Victoria here. This is a nice day because um, yeah, it's not. it's only slightly overcast, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff where I think people end up then going in indoors. Yeah, they go to coffee shops and pubs or or whatever. Um, and then also dealing with snow. And this is sort of an ongoing joke in Canada um, because, you know, Canada, it snows a lot in general, uh, but but not so much in, in Victoria, right? And so there, there are really two related jokes. One of them is that if you get, uh, you know, like a centimeter, a centimeter of snow, which is like less than half an inch, uh, the whole city shuts down because we're just not ready to to do snow. Uh, on the other hand, sometime in February or March, when Ontario is just blanketed with snow, we have daffodils coming up. Um, and so people will will take pictures of, of their daffodils and, and send them to their relatives in Ontario saying, hope you're enjoying the winter. Right. So yeah, we, get, we get both of those. I think there's a picture of Mount Tommy as well. Uh, just to give you a sense, this is this is a, an extreme snowstorm in in, in Victoria. I mean, every maybe seven years or so, we'll get more than an inch. And uh, yeah, so this is taken from from my mother's balcony uh, or lanai in, in Victoria. It over, overlooks a um, middle school. But yeah, it's I mean, that's that's the extreme weather in, in Victoria. It's it's way more sort of overcast and dreary, which, I, again, I think brings people together in in ways that you wouldn't necessarily get if if the weather was nicer and you did stuff on your own all the time. 
Well, you know, most of my trips to Canada have been in the summer, so I've uh, I've not noticed that as much. I'm glad you had some pictures of that because, uh, <clears throat> especially the times I've been in Victoria, it's been just uh, some beautiful, uh, you know, days. Especially when I would go to Bertard Gardens, uh, which I love, and uh, you know, and and that that just that's a great thing. Uh, you mentioned public transportation. Uh, well, this may not uh, fall into that, but. Uh, one of the things that Brian and I both talked about was a love of trains. And uh, one of my things on my bucket list was the Trans-Canada train trip. Uh, and I know that you've been interested in that too. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's a that's a wonderful experience that I've yet to have. Yeah, I've, I've never been on it, but it's always been something I'd want to do. I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, the geography of Canada is obviously is very diverse. And, you know, there's that middle bit that's completely flat that um, you you can just sleep through, I suppose. But but the the train also then goes through the Rocky Mountains, which you know the, the Rocky Mountains are impressive anywhere. But uh, I think they they generally are, are taller and more magnificent, I guess, in in the British Columbia area, just because they're taller and and so on. Um, yeah, and you know just going through Ontario and so on. It's just Canada is a big place, and uh, I think it, it'd be fun to go th- to go across. But uh, yeah, as I say, I, I haven't been. The Empress, well, incidentally, is it the technically at the end of the railroad, even though it's oh, on an right? island? Yeah, it, it's it's like it's like calling the the highways here the interstate. You know, the Eisenhower interstate system, even though Hawaii doesn't really connect much to the mainland. Um, yeah, it's the same sort of idea. Anyway, yeah. uh, you also mentioned that one of the things that you that you would like to do because I I asked Brian that what. Uh, what places in Canada has he left on his uh, to-go-to uh, list? And one of the places you said was uh, on the East Coast. Uh, I think you mentioned Nova Scotia, or the islands over there, uh, the far eastern end. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, like Halifax and so on are just are very, they're, they're old cities. They've got a really vibrant culture, uh, a lot of really great music um, and so on. Uh, I think actually Quebec would be a neat place to go. Um, it's just, you know, the very old town, uh, very European, uh, you know, you know, Quebec was separated from France before the Napoleonic or before the revolution and so on. Uh, and so it's got a really different culture. Um, I should have a joke for you about that if you want. So yeah. th- this, this patron walks into a Montreal restaurant, which is the big city in Quebec, um, turns on a tap in the washroom and gets scalded by the water. So he goes to the manager and complains, this is outrageous. The faucet was marked C. And it gave me boiling water. So the, the restaurant manager says, but monsieur, C stands for chaud, the French word for hot. Uh, you should know that if you live in Montreal. <laughs> then a guy says, well, wait a minute. Um, the other tap is also marked C. And the manager says, well, yeah, that stands for cold. After all, <laughs> after all we, we are a bilingual city. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you, get a lot of, you get a lot of French and um, uh, English jokes in, in Canada. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's yeah it, that that's sort of the older part of the country, and even that is not that old compared to Europe. But it's uh, okay. yeah, and it's and the cultures are are, are really very different. Um, you know, the West Coast and Ontario and, and Southern Ontario and so on. Yeah, yeah, I certainly agree, <clears throat> and uh, I certainly enjoyed my time in the uh, in the seventies. I was able to present a, a paper, psychological paper, up in Montreal, and. Uh, and I really enjoyed that, except when they would yell at me for my French pronunciation. They didn't uh, didn't much care for my efforts at, at talking French. So, uh, but other than that, uh, they were very welcoming, and it was a great uh, it was a great trip. I really appreciate you sharing some jokes because uh, it leads us into the next area, uh, which is Brian and my history, uh, because we met over twenty years ago at a humor group here in Oahu called Aloha Ha. Uh, and that group was hosted by David Swift, who is a uh, professor of sociology out at UH. And we had wonderful times for many, many years of getting together and sharing jokes and uh, cartoons and stories uh, that made us laugh. So we would come in and, and a couple hours after the, uh, you know, we were finished. I mean, in a couple hours when we were finished, we would leave feeling high, you know, without any alcohol uh, helping us because we were just. High on laughter and high on enjoyment. So 
that was a very special thing where Brian and I first met and enjoyed. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, one of the things that Brian did at that group was he introduced us to uh, Canadian TV, which I had no experience with. Uh, and I guess the show that you mostly brought along and showed us little clips from our little uh, episodes from was Corner Gas. Is that right? Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, it was wonderful. And, uh, you know, and Brian's very articulate about the, the differences between Canadian and American humor. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, I don't want to commit to offering a general dissertation on this, but yeah, no, it's so Corner <laughs> Gas, uh, it, it came out in uh, 2004 and it was a bad uh, six seasons, I think. And it's just, it's small. It's set in this small town in Saskatchewan. Um, a lot of it is situational humor, a lot of language. It's kind of like a Seinfeld um, thing. And, um, you know, and part of it is you know, it, it's very, it, it, it can be very specific to Canada. And I think that's one of the things that happens with Canadian humor as well as with music is that um, like in Corner Gas, one of the the episodes was all about a Daryl Sittler rookie card. You know, and if you don't know hockey and you don't know who Daryl Sittler was, it doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, it would be, I don't, it would be like having a Joe Namath rookie card or something like that, I guess. Right. And so, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, specific, um, specific humor there. And like the first joke uh, was in Corner Gas was, some guy from Toronto got out of a car, looked around and said, I can't see anything, right? Because this is Saskatchewan, which is all flat. And then they get into this argument about, well, no, you can see forever. There's nothing in your way. And so then it's like, well, you know, what am I, am I looking at anything? Because he wanted to see mountains. He wanted to see trees. He wanted to see something. And it's basically just flat prairie land. And and that's a lot of the sort of humor is kind of dry situational stuff. It's It sort of takes on... Like it's kind of a combination, I think, of British and American sources. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like we, you know, my, my generation grew up on Monty Python, uh, amongst others, or Faulty Towers, and uh, so there's an element. There's also the like an element of self-deprecating um, humor, I suppose, uh, but also kind of passive aggressive, right? So, like, you know, one standard joke is, "What's the difference between a Canadian and a canoe?" and a Canadian tips. Right. And if you if you've ever worked in in uh, restaurants in, in Hawaii, you know, one of the one of the uh, things that people say about Canadians is that we tend not to tip very well. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, you know, what, one of the jokes is in what way is the U.S. better than Canada? And yeah. the U.S. has nicer neighbors. <laughs> like and that. Yeah, so there's that sort of. Yeah, I mean, so it's it, there's an edge to it, but it's not. Uh, it's not the comic edge that you sometimes or often will get with, with American uh, comedians. Like there was an example, one of, one of the, the shows that came out of Canada was kids in the hall, which was a sketch show. Uh, and they would often dress up as, as elderly women, much like Monty Python did. Right. But, but they're always very kind of loving and maybe a little, um, I don't know, eccentric, I suppose. But I, I remember reading a, an interview with the uh, the kids in the hall and they said, you know, we basically just dressed up like our mothers and uh, and then had conversations like they would have with their friends. Right. So kind of plays on the stereotypes, but it's not like they, they weren't mean. You know, it wasn't that kind of like English humor, I think, can be mean. And. Uh, yeah, and Canadian, I mean, there's some of it, obviously, but not a lot. So a couple quick ones here. Um, so it, you know, how do you get 50 Canadians out of a swimming pool? You say, please get out of the swimming pool. <laughs> you know, and that's part of the stereotype of, you know, being nice. Um, you know, or how do you get a Canadian to apologize? You step on his foot. <laughs> um, or yeah, the other one, I, and this was a bumper sticker is someday Canada will rule the earth and then everyone will be sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, and in a way, like, I think the whole country is just a whole, is a series of dad jokes, you know, just sort of lame, <laughs> kind of funny, but yeah. Uh, well, I can see from the clock that we're uh, running down. Uh, and uh, it's hard to leave that, that humor. I always loved, uh, I've always loved humor, whatever, wherever it comes from. And uh, it was always a joy watching uh, Corner Gas and some of the stuff that you brought to, uh, Aloha. Ha. But since we're running a little short of time, what, usually what I do is I ask uh, my guests to uh, make some recommendations or some thoughts for the audience. Uh, uh, the subtitle of the show today is Back in uh, the Saddle Again. 
back on the road again. And uh, after the pandemic, I think a lot of people in this country are really interested in traveling and uh, getting out of the house and uh, getting out of the restricted spaces that we've been in. And uh, hopefully a lot of these people are thinking about coming and vacationing in Canada, which is a wonderful vacation spot because it's so much like us and it's uh, not as expensive as going someplace further away. And the people are really, really pleasant. So uh, thoughts or recommendations for the, uh, the audience who are thinking of coming up to Canada, uh, where they might go and what they might do. I mean, part of it is unless you like uh, overcast skies go in the summer, um, there's, there's skiing around, um, but not in Victoria. You have to go up, up Island and so on. I mean, butchered gardens, as you had mentioned is great. Um, having high tea at the Empress is, uh, is, it's not cheap, but it's very good. You know, and there's the provincial museum. There's a lot of used bookstores, a lot of antique shops. There's great chocolate. Uh, Rogers chocolate has been there since the 1920s, I think. Uh, they, they make wonderful, uh, chocolate and there's ciders. There's a great scotch distillery. Um, there's a lot of American tourists, which, you know, it's not necessarily good unless you're an American tourist and want to be, <laughs> want to hang out with them, you know, uh, I mean, basically, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's a nice place to hang out. You know, it's not high energy. It's yeah. I mean, you know, that might be the logo for Canada. You know, it's a nice place to hang out. Um, no, that's great. Uh, and we can certainly use some hanging out and some relaxation <laughs> with all the stress we've been on and, uh, the anxiety and the depression that a lot of people find themselves in with the state of the world today. So it certainly fits in with the program of finding happiness in, in hard times, or in this case, in recent times. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing with me, uh, Brian. And uh, Canada is a place I love, and, it, uh, and I love my Canadian friends. And uh, I really appreciate that and all the time we've spent together. Um, <clears throat> I can see we've run out of time, and uh, I just wanted to thank everybody at Think Tech Hawaii. I want to thank Jay and Michael and Haley and Carol and Nat for helping and supporting us, and I'd certainly like to thank the audience for tuning in and uh, finding a smile with us and finding a laugh, uh, which uh, Brian really uh, helped us today with his Canadian humor. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be back again, and we'll still be going north. I, I've been orientated toward north. And that's not uncommon, being living on the North Shore. We won't go as far as Canada, but we will go north to Oregon next time. So you'll be able to see some of the joy uh, that Oregon has to offer us as well. Until then, aloha. Aloha.